in for class today. We're going to be doing a leg dominant workout. So we'll be focusing on the quadriceps, glutes, hamstrings, and inner thighs. So for today's first exercise, we're going to be getting, beginning with footwork. So I have on three reds and one blue spring on my Marathi Reformer. Um, feel free to do heavier or lighter if you prefer. If you are on a balanced body reformer, I recommend at least four springs for this first position. So maybe you have three reds and a green, or you have three reds and a yellow if you're feeling like you want to go a little bit lighter. Um, totally up to you. So I'm going to put my headrest up for my neck alignment. If you know you need your headrest up so your ears are in line with your clavicle, go ahead and put that up. And my foot bar is in the upright position, the highest setting. We're going to be laying down, starting with our heels approximately two, three inches apart, about the size of your fist. Flex your feet so that your toes face the ceiling, and then just anchor your arms down here by your sides. When you're ready, taking an exhale, push the carriage all the way out, extend the legs straight. Inhale to bring the carriage back in, resisting, stop just before you lose tension, and then exhale to take it back out, and an inhale to bring it back in. Once you get the hang of it, you can start to move a little bit quicker. We do want to be getting our blood flowing here. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Exhaling as you press away. Inhaling as you pull it in. Then the spine is neutral, so let's make sure we're keeping a soft, natural curve in the small of our lower back. On your next one, let's take the carriage approximately halfway out and start to pulse the carriage a few inches out, a few inches in, making each movement roughly the same size as the last. Squeeze those glutes so quadriceps aren't the only thing feeling the burn. Then we'll take it all the way out five times. Last time. Bring it in. We're going to change to a Pilates V with our heels together on the foot bar. Toes, knees, and thigh bones slightly angled out to the sides. Exhales as you cross the carriage away, squeeze our thighs together tightly. Come back in, resisting. Exhales, push away. Inhales, return back in. Because this is our second foot position with our heels up on the bar, our ankles should start to get a little bit toasty from having to keep our feet in that flexed upright position. Take your next one approximately halfway out, begin to pulse the carriage a few inches out and in. motion all the way out five times to finish the set. All right, then our last foot position here is going to be legs together with our toes on the bar. Lift the heels up high, squeezing the ankles, knees, and inner thighs together tightly. Exhale, press all the way out, lower the heels under the bar together. Lift both heels up, Bend the knees and bring the carriage in. So we press out, lower the heels, lift the heels, and return. Continue in that pattern. Please keep in mind that as you're lowering your heels underneath the bar, it's not a release. It's not just dropping the heels under the bar. We are moving our heels under the bar with intention and purpose and in a controlled manner. That way we're not just locked into our knees. Two more. We're also still keeping our core engaged, keeping our spine neutral, not letting our back excessively arch or smash into the carriage, which is more common. On your next one, Let's come in halfway, deep squat, hold it. Just the heels, lower, lift, lower, lift. Keep your knees and your ankle bones drawing close together. 
Drawing most of your weight towards your big and your second toes. Keep your heels lifted up high, pulse the carriage. And press all the way up so the legs are extended straight. Take continuous calf raises, lower the heels down and up, down and up. Keep your glutes active. Calf muscles should be talking to you. And then take it into prancing. Alternate bending the knees. You can go a little bit slower. Enjoy the stretch in those calves. All right. Bend the knees. Draw the carriage all the way home. We're going to place our headrest down in case you have it lifted. We'll keep our spring tension the same for bridge work. Place the arches or your heels right on the top part of the bar and separate your feet just a little bit so that they're in line with your inside of your hips. Arms will anchor down by your sides. And again, I scoot off of my blocks just a little bit. Without moving the carriage, take an exhale as you imprint your lumbar spine so it's flat. And then sequentially roll the hips up one vertebrae at a time into a bridge. We want to create a straight diagonal line from our knee down to our shoulder. Take an inhale through your nose, lift your hips a teensy bit higher, and then exhale, roll your spine back down to the carriage, one vertebrae at a time, through imprint, back to neutral spine. Re-imprint the lumbar spine, roll the hips up, squeeze the glutes, Take an inhale through your nose, stay lifted, reach your arms further forward out of your ears. Exhale, roll the spine back down, one vertebrae at a time. So let's do two more of these hip rolls. Exhales as you imprint, roll the hips up. Inhales as you stay lifted, exhales, roll back down. At the top of the next bridge you take, remain in your lifted position. Notice that you have even weight across the back of your shoulders. We're going to draw our right leg straight to the ceiling, toes point. Draw a small circle on your, on your ceiling without letting anything else move. So your left glute should have to work really hard here. Reverse the circle. Hold the leg still for a moment, flex your foot, lower your leg over the foot bar, only as low as you're able to keep your hips level, point your foot, return back up to the ceiling, flex, lower the leg away, point, return to the ceiling. Three more, relax your neck, last two. Last time, end with your right leg to the ceiling, lift the hips a little bit higher, replace the right foot onto the bar. Ensure that your hips are level, maybe reach your arms a little straighter. Left leg draws up to the ceiling, toes point, draw a small circle on the ceiling. Reverse it. Notice what's going on with your right leg. Keep your right leg still. Keep your foot parallel. Hold the left leg still. Flex your foot. Lower the leg away from you. Point the foot, return to the ceiling. Flex, lower away. Point, return to the ceiling. Last two. Last time, end with your leg to the ceiling, toes pointed. Lift the hips up a little bit higher. Replace your left foot onto the bar. Take an inhale, lift the hips higher, make sure everything's straight, and then exhale, roll your spine all the way down to the carriage, one vertebrae at a time. Excellent, all right, we'll set ourselves up from there. We're gonna change our springs a little bit because we're gonna be doing some single leg footwork. So for single leg footwork, on my reformer here, I like to do two reds and one blue spring. 
If you wanted to do something a little bit lighter, <coughs> excuse me, you could do a red, uh, two reds and one white. If you're on a balanced body, um, you could do two reds and a blue, or you could do two reds and a yellow if you have that yellow spring on there. So your choice. I'm gonna put my headrest back up again, and then we're gonna lie back down. So we're gonna be doing two foot positions on each leg. We'll start with our right heel on the bar in line with our right hip joint, and then we'll have our left leg in tabletop to begin. Arms will come down by your sides. We're gonna take an exhale, make sure that right heel is on there good. Exhale, push that right leg all the way out. Inhales to come back in. Exhales, push it out. Inhales, return it in. If you wanna make it a little bit fancier, you could extend the left leg over the bar on the way in and draw your left leg to tabletop on the way out. If that's too much coordination or you just don't want to do it today, that's totally fine. Just keep your leg in tabletop. The most important thing is that our Pilates principles stay with us. Our hips are level. Our spine is neutral with that natural curve. Then do your best to keep your right foot really still. Take your next one approximately halfway out and begin to pulse the carriage. Keep your free left leg in tabletop right now. Keep squeezing those glutes. Let's take it all the way out one time and bring it all the way back in. Stay on the same right leg, just slide down so that your right toes are on the bar. Lift the heel up high like you're wearing one high heel and draw the left leg to tabletop. Exhale, press out. Inhale, return. Exhale out, return. Same thing with that left leg. You can add that left leg extension if you like. Be nice to your knees. Gently straightening the knees without hyperextending. And then take that next one all the way out. Keep the left leg in tabletop. Lower the right heel down and up, down, and up. So single leg calf raise. Draw most of your weight towards your big and second toe. And then lift the right heel high, bend the knee, and draw the carriage in. Switch legs. Left heel is on the bar. Right leg will start it in tabletop. Press the carriage out. Inhale, bring it almost all the way back in, and exhale out. If you'd like to add the movement of the right leg, feel free. Keep your left foot as stabilized as possible so your foot is not flopping back and forth over the bar. Take your next one halfway out with your right leg and tabletop. Pulse the carriage. Be precise with your movement. And then all the way out one time and bring it all the way in. Slide it down so that your left toes are on the bar. Lift the heel high, right legs and tabletop. Exhale, press out. Inhale, return. Exhale, push. Inhale, pull. Adding the movement of your right leg. Keeping your hips level across from each other and also level in the amount of distance there is between the bottoms of your ribs and the tops of your hips. Take the next one all the way out, stay there. Single leg calf raise, lower, lift, lower, lift. Getting as much range of motion through that left ankle as possible. And bend the left knee and draw the carriage home. Place your headrest down if you have it up. 
can keep your springs the same unless your hamstrings are really prone to cramping i would load on a little bit more weight perhaps what you just did your last bridge on so this is going to be single leg bridge work it's a little bit harder on a lighter spring we're going to again scooch off of the blocks like one or two inches and then have our feet this time pretty close to together one or two inches apart as well without moving the carriage simply exhale and lift your hips up straight into a bridge once up here draw your right leg straight to the ceiling toes point lower your hips all the way to the carriage in one movement and pick them all the way back up in one movement 10 times exhale lift inhale lower exhale lift inhale lower want all the work to be in your left glute and hamstring and I want you making the same hole in the ceiling all 10 times with that right foot. When you finish your 10th one, stay lifted. Replace your right foot onto the bar. Make sure everything's level. Your carriage is still all the way into the stopper. And draw your left leg straight to the ceiling. 10 times, lower the hips down, up down exhale up keep your neck and shoulders relaxed keep even distance on both sides of your waist when you finish all 10 stay lifted replace your left foot two feet on the bar make sure everything's parallel exhale roll your spine all the way down through imprints, back to neutral spine. Good, all right, sitting ourselves up, we're gonna make another spring change. So I'm gonna drop it down to one red and one blue spring. I would do the same thing if I was on a balanced body um, performer as well, so you could keep the same setting as me. You're gonna need both of your straps, so make sure those are accessible. I usually hang them up around my shoulder blocks, and then I'm gonna put my headrest back up as well. And then if you have a ring, Go ahead and grab that. All right. So once you've gotten your ring, let's go ahead and lie down. Place the ring on top of your chest for easy access. Grab your hand straps into your hands. Slide the carriage out gently, it's light. And then place the arches of your feet into your straps once you have the arches of your feet into your straps take your ring and place the ring just between your ankles just above the ankle bone anchor your arms down onto the carriage we'll have a neutral spine so soft natural curve in the lower back exhale press the legs down towards the foot bar stay there flex the feet pulse the ring two times Bring the legs back up to the ceiling. You can keep your feet flexed or pointed and then, flex, and then pulse the ring two times. So we're pulsing the ring at the bottom with flexed feet and then up at the ceiling twice as well. Two pulses at the bar and then two pulses at the ceiling. The reason I like to point my feet when they're up at the ceiling is so that my straps don't fly off my feet. Keep the legs low at the bar, flexed feet, and continuously pulse the ring. Abs should be tight. Spine should be neutral. Natural curve in your lower back. Bend both of your knees to a tabletop position. Stop your knees right on top of your hip joints. Push the legs back out towards the bar. Pulse the ring two times. Again, bend the knees to tabletop. Knees stop over hips. Push back out to the bar. Pulse the ring two times. So that's our new pattern. Be mindful that when you bend your knees to tabletop, your lower back doesn't smash into the carriage. 
Now we're going to move on to our next pattern. Bend the knees to tabletop. Extend the legs straight to the ceiling. Push down to the foot bar. Flex the feet. Again, tabletop. Extend to the ceiling. And push down to the foot bar. Squeeze the ring harder. Two more times. Bend the knees to tabletop. Reach legs to the ceiling. Push legs down low and squeeze the ring harder. One more time. Bend. Extend up. Press down low, hold it there with flexed feet, pulse the ring. Your inner thigh should be on fire. Reversing it four times, so straight legs go up to the ceiling. Bend the knees to tabletop. Push the legs out low to the bar and squeeze the ring hard. Again, resist as you go up to the ceiling. Bend the knees to tabletop. Push out low and squeeze the ring hard. Two more, up. Tabletop, push out low and squeeze. One more time, up. Tabletop, push out low, pulse the ring, break it. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, you made it, ditch that ring. Take a butterfly stretch, soles the feet together, knees open, feet drop down by your springs, and just hang out here for a second and breathe. Gently extend your right leg off to the side. Continue pulling the strap with your hand for an inner thigh stretch. Keep even weight across the back of your hips. Bring the right leg back in. Open the left leg off to the side. Continue pulling on the strap, inner thigh stretch. Bring the left leg back in. Lift your feet up a little bit, and then from there, you're going to extend both legs either all the way out to the side or into happy baby, which is kind of nice. You can flex your feet like you're standing on the ceiling. Use your elbows to position them onto your knees here, or extend them out to the side all the way. When you're finished up with those, you can take your feet out of your straps. Usually one at a time is best. Find the bar with that one foot, and then you can take those straps off. You can hang them up around your shoulder wraps or your heads, whatever you got. And then we're going to set ourselves all the way up from there. So now that we just did our inner thighs, we're going to move into some glutes. I'm going to lighten my spring all the way down to one blue spring. If I was on a balanced body reformer, I would also do this on a blue spring as well. If you're looking for a little bit more weight, however, both Marathu or Balanced Body, you could do this on a red, but I personally think a blue is challenging enough. Um, you can use a yoga block for this next exercise, or you can just use your arm or a folded up sweater. Um, we're just going to need something to act as a pillow on the headrest because we're going to be laying on our side. So place your yoga block or whatever you're going to use. And then lay it on your side. Make sure your straps are accessible because we're going to be using those. Once you have your head on your yoga block, you want to line your hips up kind of towards the back of the carriage and bring your knees up in front of you, almost like you're lying in the fetal position. However, we want our spine to be long and not all rounded up. Once you've gotten your spine in that position, use your hands. It should be light enough to reel yourself in, get a ton of slack. It'll make your life easier and hook the arch of your top foot into the strap. Extend the leg out straight to the foot bar and then tuck that bottom knee up onto the carriage a little bit more, make sure it's still on there. Your top hand's coming onto your hip. Your bottom arm is just coming out from underneath you here. With a straight leg in the strap, bring it forward pointing your foot to about 90 degrees so your ankle is in line with your hip. And then exhale, flex the foot, sweep it back towards the foot bar. Point the foot as the leg comes forward, stopping at 90 degrees. Flex the foot, sweep it back towards the foot bar. Now, I want you to keep your ankle, knee, and hip all on the same level right now, as if your entire leg was skimming above the surface of freezing cold water. Don't dip your leg into the water. The bottom side of your waist should also be as long as the top side of your waist. So be careful again that we're not laying in the fetal position. We're using our abdominals to maintain the position of our spine. 
Now, bring the leg forward in front of you. We're gonna draw five circles, getting the carriage to move with each circle, a little bit bigger than the size of a basketball. Go slow and steady. These should burn pretty much immediately. And then you're gonna reverse it five times as well. Go slow. Keep nice, even tension in the strap. Don't lose your tension, don't get slack. When you finish those five, you're gonna keep the leg right in front of you, keep the carriage still, lift the leg up towards the ceiling as much as you can without rolling backwards, and then back down to just in line with your hip. Exhales, lift it, inhales, lower it. So going down, resisting gravity is really the hardest part for the muscle. Once you finish five, come back down parallel to the floor and come all the way back to the foot bar, flex your foot. Bend the knee into a tabletop position. The strap should go roughly to the front of your shin and then push back out towards the bar. Inhale, bend the knee in. Exhale, push it out. Let's do five of these. This is three. And four and five. Now we have five bicycles. Bend the knee to tabletop. Extend the leg forward and sweep it back towards the bar. Again, bend the knee to tabletop. Extend the leg forward and sweep it back to the bar. Three more. Flexing the foot as it comes to the bar. Pointing the foot as you extend it forward. Once you finish five, then we reverse it five times. Forward with a straight leg. Flex the foot, bend the knee in, and then press it back out. The last three, take your time. Notice what's going on with your shoulders, your abs, the length of your waist. Keep it all nice and good. When you finish those, you're gonna bend the knee in Take the strap and thread it through your leg all the way above the knee like you're putting on a pair of pants. Your feet are gonna stay connected. Open the top knee and close the top knee. It's gonna be a small movement. The carriage will barely move, but the glutes should burn a lot. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, you can carefully set yourself up from there. We'll take the strap off of our leg and stretch out the glutes. So I like to just do a figure four stretch. So sitting with your feet flat on the ground, whichever leg was just in the strap, cross that ankle over your knee, flex your foot, and then lean forward for that figure four stretch. Then we're gonna do all that on the other side. So, when you're ready, swing yourself around, slide your hips to the bottom back corner of the carriage, place your head on your yoga block or whatever you're using, lengthen out the spine, take the strap off of your shoulder rest, reel yourself in and hook your top foot into the strap. Extend the leg straight out to the foot bar, tuck the bottom knee up out of the way. From here, you can start with your foot um, pointed. We're going to bring it forward in front of us to about 90 degrees. Flex the foot and come back to the bar. Again, point the foot as it comes forward. Flex the foot as it comes back towards the bar. Spine is long. Both sides of the waist are the same length. Keep breathing. Bring the leg forward in front of you, 90 degrees, and draw five circles, getting the carriage to move with each circle you take. These circles are a little bit bigger than a basketball. Nice steady tension. When you finish those five, let's reverse it. And then from there, 
Okay, you're gonna try your best to keep your carriage still and your hips still. Lift that leg up towards the ceiling and back down parallel to the ground. Nothing moves except for the leg. We're even trying to keep both sides of our waist the same length. Keep your bottom oblique pulling in away from the carriage. When you finish those, bring it back down parallel to the ground. Bring it back towards the bar and flex your foot. Bend your knee to a tabletop position and push back out to the bar five times. Stop your knee in line with your hip when it bends. Then we have five bicycles. So bend the knee to tabletop, extend the leg forward and sweep it back to the bar. Again, bend the knee to tabletop, extend the leg forward, sweep it back. Flex the foot as you bend the knee, point the foot as you straighten the leg, flex as you come back to the bar. Reversing with a straight leg, come forward, flex the foot, bend the knee to tabletop, and then push out to the bar. Second side is always a little bit harder because those glutes are tired from the previous side. Hang in there, almost done. When you finish, the last part of the series is to take clam. So bend your knee and pull your strap through your leg above your knee. Stack the legs one on top of each other. Open and close the top knee, keeping the feet connected and low. Five, four, three, two, and one. Carefully coming up from there, you can take your strap off of your leg and we'll take a figure four stretch. So whichever leg is just on the strap, that's the one you're gonna cross over your knee with a flexed foot and then try to lean forward a little bit from there. It might be tight, so be gentle. Okay, then we're gonna put our boxes on the reformer long ways. So on the uh, Marathi reformers, long box will go against the shoulder rest. If you're on the balanced body reformers, um, on the Allegros, I like it if you turn the shoulder blocks to their narrow position and then put the box over the shoulder rest. Um, on the Balanced Body Studio Reformers, I think it just goes right against the shoulder rests on those. Um, he did your yoga block or whatever you were using. And then we will keep our spring again. I would still stay on a blue spring for Marathi or Balanced Body. So we're going to do some four-point kneeling leg sweeps. So grab whichever strap you'd like to use first. I'm going to use my left one first so you guys can see that side. Carefully come up onto your box facing the headrest. Position your knees kind of in the middle of the box to begin. So your hips gently onto your heels. Reel yourself in, get a lot of slack, make your life easy. Swing your foot off to the side and hook your left foot inside of the strap. Once you've got your foot into the strap, then you can move your body freely. So your hands are gonna to come to the corners of their box and then your supporting knee is gonna come back and over toward the left hand side. So you make a really exaggerated tripod stance. The left leg is then gonna sweep all the way up behind us to hip height. Flex your foot, square your shoulders and your hips to the floor. We're gonna lower our foot down just to the frame of the reformer, and then exhale, sweep it back up to about hip height. So inhale down just to the silver frame, exhales to come back up, to about hip height. We wanna make sure that we are moving from the hip joint and not from our spine. So you should feel this kick in right underneath your bum. And you should feel your abdominals stabilizing your spine. So your back isn't arching and doing all sorts of stuff. Keep the leg lifted up parallel to the ground. From here, bend the knee in. It's gonna stop in line with the other one. Exhales, push back out to hip height. 
Inhale, bend the knee in line with the other one. Exhale, push back out, hip height. Keep going. Most of my weight is in my um, left arm. My right arm has maybe about 30% of the weight. So I am leaning a lot to the left. Hang in there. This was extra tough after that last exercise. Three more. Last time, keep that left leg straight, hold. Push up through your arms, make sure you're not sinking through your scapulas. And then gently place your knee down onto the box. We'll remove our foot from the strap. You can ditch that strap. Stand up if you need to to grab your other strap off of the floor, and we'll do the other side. So coming up onto your knees, reel yourself in, swing your foot off to the side of the box, hook your foot, establish your hands at their respective corners of the box, move your left knee back and over towards the right. With a straight right leg, sweep it all the way up to hip height, flex your foot, five toes facing the floor. Lower your foot down to the frame of your reformer, Exhale is back up to hip height. Inhale down. Exhale up. Down. And up. Most of your weight should be in your right hand. And you should feel a ton of work through the right glute and hamstring. Keep your neck in line with your spine, looking at the ground slightly in front of the headrest. Now, from hip height with your foot flexed, bend your knee to the side of the box in line with the left one, and then push it right back out to hip height. Resist as you bend, exhale straight. Inhale, bend, exhale straight. Last couple, stay connected to your upper body. Last time, keep that right leg straight, foot flex, push up to your arms, draw your abs in, and place your right knee down onto the box, and gently remove your foot from your strap. You can ditch that strap down onto the ground. We'll stand up from there, and then we'll turn the boxes short ways. They're gonna go against the shoulder rests, no matter what reformer you're on, because we're going to be doing some leg lunges and presses, and we want the box to not be sliding. Um, so right against the shoulder rests. You can keep your spring again the same on a blue. If that proves to be too heavy, you can change it to a white if you're on a marathu, or a yellow if you're on a balanced body. The best way to get into this is to hold onto the bar and stand up onto the carriage carefully, because it's not a lot of weight. Slide the carriage out just enough so that you can take your right foot and step down inside of the well. Your left foot is going to go flat against your box. The trick with this is to make sure your left foot is in the center and your right foot is towards the right side of the reformer here, inside the well. That way you don't make your box crooked. You're going to find the point where your springs, your loose springs, are not touching your calf. You can get some pretty gnarly bruises from this if you let those loose springs attack your right calf. So please be careful. You're going to keep your left foot flat against the box. We're going to bend the front knee a little bit and place the heels of the hands on the bar. From here, press the left leg out and in, out and in. Go slow at first so that you make sure that you know where those loose springs are so that you don't end up with bruises on your right calf. You also want to make sure your right calf is not touching anything. It's very close to the side of the reformer, but it's not like leaning against it. And then, once you get the hang of it, you can continue going at that pace or pick it up. And then you can eventually bring your hands to your hips. We are leaning forward with our spine. Keeping our abs tight. And what you should start to notice is a few things. Your right side butt, your left 
quadricep, hamstring, and glute. Hang in there. Five, four, three, two. Last time, now one of my favorite transitions, hands on the bar, straighten both of your legs for a second. Tuck the left toes underneath of you, so like we're gonna come into a plank. Engage your core, shift your shoulders directly above your wrists, and then sneakily step that right foot up into this plank here. Squeeze the glutes, slightly scoop the tailbone under, lift your head up so it's in line with your spine. Keeping the shape of your body the same, Begin to slide the carriage back and forth. Keep in mind that the more backwards you slide, the harder this gets. So only go as far as you can, especially if you're on that white or yellow spring, because it's harder. It's harder the lighter it is. One more. Then we're gonna lift the hips up to the ceiling, plant your feet flat onto the carriage, separate them about shoulder width, Send your hips back and drop your chest through your arms for elephant stretch. Keeping your heels down, give the carriage gentle rock back and forth. And then when you're ready, draw the carriage closer to the stopper. Get your right foot so that it's more in the middle of the carriage. Take your left foot down inside the well. Step forward a lot and then right really close to the edge of the framework here so that we have our feet in the right position. Right foot's in the middle of the box. We're going to bend the front knee, come into a little runner's lunge. From here, press the right leg out, in, out, in. Feel free to look down and just double check the first few repetitions. Make sure you're stopping right before you attack yourself with those loose springs. And then if you feel like you've got it, and you know where you're at, hands to hips, and pick up the tempo. Keep your hips and shoulders square. Keep your left calf off of the reformer. Don't let it be leaning, that's cheating. Notice the stabilizing muscles in that left glute working, and then the muscles in that right quadricep and hamstring working. If you can, keep your right heel connected to your box, that's awesome. If not, it means that your calves are a little bit tight, like mine. Let's go for five, four, that same transition. Push out so that both legs are straight. Place your hands on the bar. Untuck your right toes. Then from there, shift your shoulders above your wrists, engage your abs, and sneakily step up into high plank. So all ten fingers to the same side of the bar. Soft elbows, high heads in line with the spine. Legs tight, tush tight. Five times. Let's slide back. And forth. Inhale backwards. Exhale forward. Three more. Go slow. Last two. Last time. When you finish, lift the hips up to the ceiling. Plant the feet flat onto the carriage. Elephant stretch. Drop your chest. Give the carriage a little rock back and forth. Then we'll draw the carriage all the way in. It will stand off the side of the reformer and we'll place our boxes back down in front of the reformer out of the way. We're gonna stretch out our legs after all of that. So you can keep your spring on a blue or a red, a red will be a little bit more supportive. Same thing for your um, balanced body people. Blue is lighter, red is heavier. Red um, gives you just a little bit more support if you're super flexible. But I like to stay on the blue. Right foot's gonna come onto the ground. It's gonna be kind of close, move it more so it's up front by the foot of your reformer. 
And then your left knee is going to stay on the carriage as you slide out into a little lunge, a little hip flexor stretch. Have just your fingertips on the bar so that you're more likely to stay upright with your spine. Now, from here, I want you to really feel that you're taking your tailbone as much as you possibly can and scooping it underneath you into a posterior tilt. What this does is helps give you a better stretch through the hip flexor so you're not just caving into your lower back and you're actually feeling it where you should be. If you are no longer holding onto the bar because you can't reach it anymore, that's fine. Bring your hands to your hips. Just be careful with your balance. If you are still balanced, take your left arm up to the ceiling, bend a little bit to the right. Come up from there, take your hands onto the bar, straighten your right leg and flex your toes to the ceiling so your foot's off the floor. Then you're going to lean forward and slide out like you're sliding out into the splits. You can walk your hands down onto the reformer, onto the frames, wherever makes the most sense for you. Just keeping your front leg as straight as you can. You want to feel this in your right hamstring and then throughout your hips. Take some deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. We'll bring it back in for an inner thigh stretch, facing the reformer. For the inner thigh stretch, we'll place the left hand onto the carriage and then the right hand onto the frame of the reformer. Slide out from there. Two straight legs as best as you can. And when you're ready, coming up from there, you can either walk around or carefully crawl across, holding onto the bar for the other side. So you have your right foot against your shoulder block, your left foot up front by the foot of the reformer itself. Light fingertips on the bar, lift your chest, slide the carriage out. Take your, the, the pelvis, scoop the tailbone underneath you so you get more of a stretch in your hip flexor and instead of your lower back. If you're balanced, reach your right arm to the ceiling, bend a little bit to the left hand side. And coming up from there, straighten out the front leg, flex your toes to the ceiling so you're on that left heel and then lean forward like you're sliding out into the splits. You can walk your hands down to wherever makes the most sense. Leaning forward. And coming back in for our inner thigh stretch, just take those right toes, rotate the legs so that your toes face the ceiling. Left foot on the ground is also still slightly turned out. Right hand to the carriage, left hand to one of the frames, and then slide out for your inner thigh stretch. Again, feel free to lean forward, find a position that feels tolerable. We worked those inner thighs pretty good earlier, so get a good stretch. When you're ready, we'll draw the carriage back in. And you are all done. Thank you so much for tuning in for class today. Hope you guys feel great. Please like this video and share it with friends who might also enjoy it. Comment below with uh, feedback and videos that you guys want to see next. And subscribe and click the notification bell in the top of the screen so that you guys see the latest videos that are being posted. I'll catch you next time. Bye.